Hey you! Do you want to avoid being a part of cancel culture? And sometimes you feel like saying, HOLY SH- CARP! What you meant is carp. In that case, we have you covered with the Holy Carp merch. Comes in everything from t-shirt, mugs, hoodies, towels, and pillows. Limited edition signed version is only available until August 24th. Not sure what this is, but it's something. Links in description, iCard section, and pinned comment. Cause when you're a grain, you come in like a hurricane. Hey Grains, so recently Poscapens have become a really huge deal in the arts and crafts community. And so today what I would really love to try and see is whether they are everything magnificent and the best thing in the universe. Or if they're really just a meh supply and it's just a select bunch of people who like it. So as a beginner, naturally since I have no idea what colors to pick up, the last time I went to Japan, you, you guessed it. I am here in Japan. I really don't understand the whole trend of Posca pens, but you know, this is home base. So I am at Tokyo Hands, which is probably one of the best shops to pick up Posca pens. So you know what? I'm gonna go and pick up one of each color of one of the sizes. So, and then we're gonna test it out at home. So from what I understand is that these ones here, the 1.8 to 2.5, there are, so there's 29 of this thickness. I think it's the most standard thickness. So I'm gonna go ahead and get one of each. Pat thinks it's overkill. What do you think? Yep. <laughs> I've never used them before, so I don't know what the hype is, and I think the best way to do it is to just grab one of all of these. And the glittery ones, of course. What's that? Is that paper for those kinds of pens? I guess. We don't know, which means just, just, just buy it. I just spent a hundred dollars on Posca pens. Things I've never used and I'm just curious about. So, that's, that's what I just did. Yes, you saw that right. I didn't just pick up a couple of colors. I picked up all of the colors in that one size. Yes, including the glittery ones, because you can never look at me. Get a little close, come closer, closer, closer. Yes, just right. You can never have enough glitter in your life. And if you believe otherwise, just, just think of glitter as like colorful salt. Okay, that's what it is. So one of the big questions is, what are Posca pens? Posca pens are supposed to be paint markers. Notice how I said supposed to be, but they are. You can tell the salt made me skeptical from the essence of my soul. And those paint markers are supposed to help you draw on virtually any surface according to their website. So we should be able to draw on glass, wood, metal, all different surfaces. And I've seen so many of my artist friends use it and get absolutely gorgeous results. Now, however, as a beginner, can we get some fun results? And is it a fun material to work with? Because I've also seen dollar store equivalents. Wait here like so, and direct competitors. So if you're interested in a future video where I compare these brand names to the dollar store equivalent and their competitors, which are cheaper, make sure that we hit 15,000 likes on this video. Then I'll know whether you're interested or not. Oh, and by the way, for those of you who have not subscribed yet, don't make me wave a sharp pointy thing at you. Click that button, click that bell, and get all notifications. So overall, for about 36 colors, I spent $100, which comes up to about $2.78 per marker. Doesn't seem too tragic, considering these are like the Copic markers of paint markers. All right, so before we start painting on different surfaces, let's do color swatches and see whether or not the colors on the actual caps. English number one. That's the word I was looking for. Correspond to the colors that come out of the tubes. I know I've said multiple times that I've gone to Japanese craft stores, but if I were allowed to come back and haunt one place in this whole world, I would love to be the ghost of Sekaido, which is like the biggest craft store in Japan. If you could come back and haunt one place, let me know in the comment section below which, where would you like to be haunting if, if you had a choice? Definitely a craft store for me. All right, since Japan loves to individually wrap everything, but then again, most of their stuff is actually recycled, I got a tip from Casey Golden, who got a tip from her subscribers, that the best way to open this is not this way. But instead, we do it this way. Twist the cap, and the whole thing comes off. Pretty cool, huh? Just say yes. That's what I want. 
So I'm going to go ahead and unwrap all of these things. One eternity later. All my colors have been laid out in the order I think they should go, and I've put down the words of the colors, which is called the names of the colors, technically if you speak English properly, unlike me. But I don't know if I'm gonna get a chance to be salty in this video, so let me just be salty for the whole wide world. Who, in their right mind, thought it was a good idea to spell fuchsia like this? Because my head does not go to fuchsia when I see this word. It, it, it's just... Let, let, let's just pretend you know exactly how my mind is spelling this. As you can see, even my instinct to write it was completely off, so... Am I gonna correct it? I'm just leaving it as it is with my scribbles. All right, so first things first, when it comes to the marker themselves, they're very slick. I mean, they're really smooth. They feel like velvety plastic. That's the softest plastic you can think of. That's exactly what this feels like. All right, now, to, in order to do this, the tips themselves are not activated. So when you get a fresh marker, they are not activated at all. So what we have to do is shake them and then pump them until the paint comes out. So let's, let's do the doing. Moments later. More moments later. All right, so here we go. Usually I tend to ruin these kinds of nib things, but you know what? I also have black paper, so we're going to be testing these colors and their vibrancy on the black paper as well. Maybe we should do that now. White paper. <laughs> black paper. Let's play. All right, so let's pump. I'm always scared with these things. So we can start seeing that the paint is coming down. This is exciting. Why am I so excited? I guess I just love artsy things. And here's the first stroke. Oh, that is so juicy. That is so opaque. It's one thing seeing them on camera, but it really is another thing seeing them in person. I think I need to shake them a little bit more because I could still see through it. So back to shaking because apparently shaking it is the key to getting a good color. Thank you again, Casey. So if the color's not pretty, keep shaking. All right, so here we are shaking after 30 more seconds. Let's see the difference. Oh, that is quite the difference. You can see here, it's a little streaky, whereas on the second side here, it's a lot less transparent. It's a lot more opaque, in other words. So shaking really is the key. Even after you've shaken it, and let's say you put them aside, in order to use them again, you have to shake them again. So I'm gonna go ahead, shake all 36 colors. Do I regret it? No. Will I regret it by color number 36? Most probably. Alright, here's something really interesting. So, here's the gold, and as you can tell, there's a little bit of a gray tint to it. Not sure that you guys can see, but it's kind of silvery gold. Whereas the silver is pure silver. I know it looks really gold here, but trust me, there's some silver on it. But when they both go on the black paper, it is purely gold. I feel like the gold might have some kind of silvery glitter in it, so it's reflecting against the white paper. All right, so now it's time for the glitter ones, but for some reason, I've been pumping them. I've been pushing down on them. I've been shaking them. <laughs> and I'm still not getting enough leakage. Come on, come on. Just get your minds out of the gutter. So I have no idea how many pumps this is going to take before it unleashes <laughs> the, the glitter liquid. <laughs> I'm gonna stop now. In all seriousness though, I've been pumping so many times that I'm starting to wonder if I'm doing it wrong. So for those of you who want to say, Jackie, you're doing it wrong. Why don't you bring your butt over here and give it a try? Because I'm doing my best. I have to admit, I'm getting a little annoyed with these glitter things because they're just not cooperating much. And they're bordering on the slightly translucent side. So here's the green, purple, dark blue, light blue, pink, orange, and red. 
And even though the colors are pretty pretty, I don't feel they're as juicy or as pretty as the original colors. So part of me already feels like these are probably a waste of money. So this is what I have to deal with when I'm recording, is just constant meowing in the background. Let me go get him. Alright, so this chubby buddy is not allowed in this craft room, but he keeps pushing his luck. Meet Ramses. Ramses, these are my grains. <laughs> So generally, do I love glitter? Yes! Do I love it more than salt? <laughs> Don't ever say something like that again. Ever! But if you look on how it's actually coming down on white paper, it's very similar to the gold marker. I feel like the glitter is probably either gray or white, so it's not reflecting nicely on white paper. Whereas on the black paper, it does look pretty nice, but I feel like I still wouldn't waste the money buying glitter Posca pens. And I am extremely impressed to say that the Posca pens caps and the colors that come out of them are insanely close. These are just a couple of the markers, but if you just put them next to each other, I'm not gonna put all of them. They are ridiculously, I mean ridiculously close to the caps. That is, that is a plus one right there, Posca. So 100% I am in love with Posca pens on either the white or black paper. And yes, it definitely stands out way more on black paper. Their website claims that Posca pens are ideal for almost any surface. And I mean wood, metal, plastic, glass, rocks. And you know what? We're gonna try that. And so here's a raw piece of wood and let's draw one of my little weird creatures because I feel like vibrant and gorgeous colors are pretty much what make my creatures stand out from like creepy to borderline kind of cute. Now, as I'm coloring in on the piece of wood, I was so surprised. I really didn't expect to get that much coverage in so little strokes. And it was really juicy, really smooth. It really completely made me understand why so many artists in the community are in love with this medium. I also really thought because it's juicy, it's going to take a long time to dry. But so far on this piece of wood, it doesn't take as long to dry as I thought. So waiting anywhere between 15 to 30 seconds was more than enough for some of the parts. One of the other things I quickly noticed about using Posca pens when drying, if you made a mistake, just let it dry and you can easily cover it up with another color. It reminds me a lot of oil paints and a lot less like acrylic paints. To be honest, I am not a fan of acrylic painting, but these ones are starting to change me. So part of me has an identity crisis. I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on. Do I actually like acrylic painting markers? What the heck? Why do I love this so much? Nerdy crafter, you will love me because everyone loves me and you know what verbs do when you don't listen. <gasps> Alright, I guess the verb's spoken. I have to love them. And again, to show you the comparison between the glitter ones and the actual opaque normal ones, you'll see it's not the same. This doesn't look that great compared to the originals. So the glitters are still meh in my books. Next! You saw nothing! Turn around! You saw nothing! I'm gonna hold it with both my hands now. Next surface we're going to be trying is plastic. Since it's supposed to work on virtually everything, let's do the doing. I'm usually a little skeptical when it comes to plastic simply because it's very slippery, so I'm curious how long it's going to take to dry. Alright, let's make a, a cute little blobby monster. Alright, first impression. Oh, oh. Well, that is way smoother than I thought. So if you look here, it is juicy. We most likely will, most likely. Wow, English number one. We're most likely going to need more than one coat, but that's, that's pretty impressive still. Why am I in love with these things? This is after five minutes and one coat. Let's do the second coat. So one of the biggest issues with working with Posca pens on plastic is that it seems that the markers reactivate each other. So even though I've tried to put white on top of the purple that's dried for the last 20 minutes, there's some bleeding that happens. So you might actually have to wait either longer or put a protective coat in between each layer. At least that's my experience thus far. So plastic, meh. 
The next surface we're going to test out, metal. How metal is metal supposed to be? So let's test it out on this surface. This is a mint tin can. All right, let's use the coral because that's absolutely cute. All right, and first impression on top of metal. It's pretty smooth, pretty juicy, but let's see if we need multiple layers. On the metal, it actually looks really cute, but you do have to put at least two coats, but very, 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 very cautiously. Because the nibs are pretty stiff, when you're putting on the second coat, there is risk that it might scratch off the next coat. And since this is paint, it's easily scratchable. Same thing with the plastic. Next material, a rock. I'm expecting the rock to be okay because it's a rock. What a joke. <laughs> We're not going to do an elaborate drawing. I just want to see the kind of coverage we're getting when it comes to a rock. And the answer is... Holy moly. Let's make a couple of colors, let it dry, and see if we can see any of the other patterns underneath. Pretty impressed. So if you're into rock painting, most definitely yes, it's cute and easy to use. And last but not least, I'm going to be painting on this fabric bag. I don't know why I forgot my words. And I'm pretty sure you can use... I'm pretty sure you can use fabric paint, but we want to test them on all surfaces. So I'm just gonna do a little heart, because little hearts are cute. Forgive my cat hair. Ooh, that is not... Not as opaque as I expected. It seems to absorb all of the paint on the inside, so let's just go ahead and color it and see how much of it is lost. This is disappointing. All right, here's layer number two. And I put also a piece of paper underneath to avoid it from soaking in way too deeply. And our third layer. So here it is after the third layer. I really think it's absolutely adorable, but would I spend three layers doing this? If I can get fabric paint that can do the same thing in one layer? Probably not. So overall, here are Posca pens on white paper, black paper, wood, metal, rock, plastic, and fabric. Are they really worth the hype that almost all the artists I've seen here on YouTube review them? And there are two answers to that one, both yes and no. If you're looking for a paint medium that is absolutely opaque, really easy to use, and you don't have to clean brushes nonstop, the answer is yes. But the glitter version, because the tip of the nib is really much more stiff, it makes it so that it just keeps scratching the paint around as opposed to spreading it evenly. That could also be maybe because the nibs are much slimmer. But I am still not a fan of the glitter because they are a lot more liquidy and they cover a lot less. But if you're looking for something that is going to be working on fabric in a very opaque way with just one layer, probably not. But if I were to recommend these, I would definitely say yes. Now the question is, how do they fare against dollar store brands and their competitors? Again, if it's something you're interested in seeing me compare, make sure we get at least 15,000 likes on this video. Of course, the higher, the more I know you really want it, like really, really want it, which means instead of doing it in like three weeks, I'll do it the next week. If you've ever tried them, let me know. I'm curious what you use them for in the comment section below. And also don't forget, it is the last week of merch. After that, it will not be the limited edition signed version. Whether you're watching videos or buying merch, having your support by commenting, liking, and just being a grain means the world to me. And for those of you who can definitely get the merch, I really appreciate it. It does help me be able to waste my money and get cash or trash crap kits to, to make sure that you don't waste your money. Today's shoutouts go to Captain Clover. I love the fact that I am a My Hero Academia character. Benny Badummy. The Art of Gloomy. Rahar Art. That salty face is everything. Hyperchronic. Type 40 Design. Samurai Bird. Julia Ma. Fizzy Slimes. Lunar Love. And Christina Bosnes. If you want to shout out in any of my videos, make sure you hashtag Notification Squad in the comment section below within the first five hours of a video's release, or hashtag NerdyCraft on Instagram or Twitter anytime with any of your creations. If you want to watch another crafty video, make sure you check up here. And if you want to watch a video that YouTube thinks is the right one for you, check it out down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.